Hi, it's James Hardiwinch here from uh, HeyJamesHowDoI.com and a few people have told me that they're worried about soldering and they don't know how to do soldering so I thought I'd spend just a little bit of time talking about soldering and talking about what you need and basically you need a soldering iron which I'll come to in a moment and you need solder and you need flux now I've got various sizes of solder here um, this one if you're doing electronics you're really not going to need anything that size that's for doing plumbing so we'll forget about that and all of the other solders here, different sizes that I've got at different stages. And this solder usually contains flux. Uh, this one, you can just see the remains of a label that says resin cord. Um, and this one uh, says multi cord. But I've come to um, fairly recently, within the last year or so, to always adding extra flux, and it makes things go so much easier. And I've got two things. I've got this flux pen for doing just a little tiny bit of uh, fluxing. And it's just like a, a felt tip pen. And you kind of poke it down um, and rub it over. And that applies a little bit of flux. But mostly I just use this little pot of flux. And I don't know if you can see the surface there. It's pitted with holes because of all the times that I just poke something in. And then you need a soldering iron and it's fairly recently that I treated myself to this temperature controlled soldering iron and I can't tell you how much easier it's made life. Um, apart from anything else you can actually see from the numbers here when it's up to temperature. It really didn't cost that much. I got it off of eBay. Um, the soldering iron is here on a nice little stand where it's sort of protected. And the first thing you need is I actually keep a little bottle of water, a little spray bottle of water and in the bottom of the stand here let me show this, make sure it's showing yeah, at the bottom of the stand here there's a little piece of sponge which gets dry very quickly and it needs to be kept wet so I just spray some water onto it and turn it over in its little metal tray and spray some more water onto it Make sure that it's wet throughout, still isn't. Get more water there. And I keep the little spray bottle because uh, otherwise I'm tempted to not bother if that means I've got to go, get up and go somewhere to get it wet. So there it is, nice and wet. And what that's for is if we look at the soldering iron tip there, it's a little bit brown, but if you just wipe it over the sponge, you get a nice silvery tip. The, soldering the other tool that it's worth getting for yourself is one of these. It's called a solder sucker and it's got a little white nozzle here and a black uh, knobby here and a little black knob here. When you press it, um, did we see that on the camera? Let's try again. You see there's this plunger here and when you press this knob the plunger leaps out and it sucks solder up here and when you screwed something up and you need to desolder it you use the soldering iron to get the solder wet, you press that down and in fact you can just see some solder coming out of the bottom here it sucks the solder inside and then you squeeze it out and it is, <clears throat> it is just such a good tool if you're ever doing any soldering get yourself a solder sucker they do talk about using solder braid uh, which is braided thin bits of um, copper and that's kind of a bit like solder blotting paper but I've had this for years and it works beautifully and the nozzle is starting to wear out. And in fact I bought some new nozzles recently and this is so old they're a different size so they don't fit. So I've either got to keep trying to find nozzles this side or get myself a new solder sucker. But actually it continues to work just fine. Okay so <clears throat> I'm going to start soldering and uh, I'm going to teach you the big secret of, sol of successful soldering. And I hope I can do this whilst A, keeping the video in focus and B, keeping my hands out of the way so you can see what's going to go on. And basically what I've got here is I've got the um, little heater fan that goes on the extruder and the wires that are basically fixed to it aren't really long enough so we're going to attach some longer wires. I have come to love to bits heat shrink wire wrap. And you can get this little box, um, you can probably get similar things in America but this is from England. <coughs> I actually got this from Maplin. In general, I hate Maplin because 
you look at online to see what they've got and then when you go down the store they've never ever got it so but anyway they did have this and there's all sorts of bits of heat shrink in there and I'm going to show you how I'm going to just guard the wires on this so little fan thing using I want to do is just protect where the wires come out of the fan and go through this little space here so I'm going to thread them back out like so I've got a piece of heat shrink and I'm going to thread both wires through this piece of heat shrink and push it right up as close as I can to the fan and I want to angle the fan so that when I heat it this central label doesn't get too hot because otherwise it will peel off I have found in the past so just very quickly Yeah. Now I've threaded that back through and that feels to me like it's a lot more protected and given that this is on the x-axis and it's going to be going backwards and forwards and also on our modified design you can take it off and on at any time there's going to be quite a lot of flexing on those wires so I'm quite pleased that that's been protected by that little bit of heat shrink. So now <clears throat> here's my top secret uh, not really a secret, anyone will tell you this, that you never ever solder two things together from scratch. You always do what's called tinning first, which means to coat it with solder. Uh, I don't know how well you can see this piece of wire. Mm, it's probably not going to focus on it, sorry about that. But it's copper wire, it's coppery colour. And what I'm going to do is just literally poke it into the uh, flux and then take soldering iron, I might even just dab the soldering iron into the flux, take the soldering iron and wire it together to the solder and within seconds that is now silvery coloured, that is coated with solder, it is wet with solder or it's now cooled off so it's no longer wet and I'll do the same on the black one, put a flux just a touch in there and the solder just flows onto the copper as easy as anything. Without the flux, sometimes it, it doesn't wet. It sort of the solder sits there as a as a bubble. It hasn't really connected with the wire. But with the flux, every time without any trouble at all. So this is a the extension bit. A bit too much flux on there. Doesn't really matter. Just touch those together and hey presto that's soldered and this is so easy that once you get the hang of it whenever you're preparing any bit of wire you always tin it even if all you're going to do is connect it into a plug tin it it's just so much stronger clean that <coughs> point off put it back in the um, in the stand and on to the next stage Okay, so when these joints are made, I'm going to put heat shrink on them, and I've got a large piece of heat shrink here that's going to go around over the whole thing, and then a smaller piece of heat shrink on each wire. But now I'm ready to connect, and when you've tinned like this, you don't need any extra solder. You can just bring the two pieces of wire together and touch there with the soldering iron. Okay. It is now joined. If you think that you might need a little bit of extra solder, you can just pick some up on the point of the soldering iron and pop it on top. I don't know if it comes again. There we go. And just give it a little tug to make sure that it's done. Do the red one. I think I might go in the other direction, I might hold this in this side to show on the video, get it a bit closer, like so, bring up this one, yeah, should show, pick up this little bit of solder, and we're done. 
immediately okay. Run the heat shrink up over the joint like that. Take the hot air gun. It shrinks down. The black one. Run the heat shrink up over the joint. Shrink it down and take the large piece of heat shrink up over the whole lot. Just hold it in place, shrink it down. And a nice, neat and mechanically robust joint soldered. And I'm now going to go on and tin the ends of these wires. But you've seen me do that, you don't need to see it again.